Hello and welcome to today's watercolour tutorial. It's an image that is up on screen now. It's a, a flower. I need a lot of help with flowers because it's something I don't do an awful lot of. So let's have a go at this watercolour painting. I have some paper here. It's Milford by St Cuthbert's Mill. It's 300 GSM or 140 pounds paper and it's called Press. Now it's, it's a cotton paper but apparently this Milford paper is very heavily sized so we'll see how that affects the overall artwork. So I'm going to briefly draw this uh, flower in. Apparently it's called a, a granny's bonnet. Uh, it's a very nice flower. I've not seen one in reality, but um, I'm taking it from a reference photo and we'll see what we can do with it. So it has a a fairly elaborate centre bit which I will more than likely mask off when we get to that stage and um, it's got I believe five petals that come out from it like that and then this one has a bit of a gap And goes like that. This one's not quite as separated, but they're almost like bell shapes. Bring that round to about there, and again, that's not quite separated, but that washes round there, and there's a little bit of a gap. So that's a basic flower for you. But this, this flower, it's not happy with having those petals. It has another set of petals behind it. It's quite decorative. And these ones look a lot more uh, delicate. And they've got veining in them. Whether I'll be able to get the veining in the painting, I don't know. Because this is a little bit outside of my comfort zone doing... Um, doing flowers it's not something I I excel at but we'll we'll persist with it and see how we get on so every so often they have these these petals that come out of them and there's one last one that goes like that And that's that's the flower. Now, obviously, it needs a stem. Now, I think I might have just ever so slightly drawn that on, but we'll put that there. And that's its stem. There are other bits of flowers in in the background. Like that. I'm not really making a massive big effort to do anything on a very heavily drawn level because I'm, I'm trying to be as loose as I possibly can. This, this here is a side view of one of these flowers which is nice. I'll just drop it in just as a contrast to the full on view but just partially in the image and all the rest is blurred out so that that literally is the uh, image drawn out I, I just want to indicate the fact that it's got like it, it, the these inner leaves are uh, hollowed out like that So 
So that's that drawn. So we'll move on to uh, masking certain areas off because there are bits of delicate area that I want to keep clear. And uh, then it'll be down to the painting. There are several areas in the picture that I do want to keep as white as I possibly can. Round these outer edges are quite white, although I will introduce later uh, a little bit of uh, cool definition into it. Uh, I want to keep that temporarily white while I'm working certain areas. So I'm going to, for the large areas, I'm going to use this uh, wax stick going round there. But for this detailing work, I'm going to use one of these detailing masking things here with the, uh, it, it has a pen on the end of it. So let's make a start then. Uh, I'm trying to keep as much as I can to the edge and hopefully this will protect it. It will also protect it from that side as well when I start painting. But under normal circumstances, this bit, what I'm doing with the wax, is permanent. It will remain white. But I have found with some papers that you can actually remove the wax and then start painting over it so that's a bonus because normally you can't get rid of that so we'll keep um, we'll keep going around and it's literally around the edge of this particular particular flower here and I'm hoping that it's grabbed on enough for it to uh, protect when I'm doing the watercolouring that's the one thing about some of these uh, wax crayon things is that uh, sometimes it can seep through but uh, it's only very rarely that that happens it's, it's quite trustworthy most of the time but it's about how much you apply on the uh, on the actual paper itself so we're nearly there I'll just put a little bit of streaky lines there I don't think that there's anywhere specific that I want to protect I might the odd fleck here and there but just very lightly that's that side of the masking done with the wax I'm now going to go into uh, the centre and as you can see it's uh, it's got a little tube in here that you can use as a, a guide and you do very thin like that which will be great for that because that's what they are the little stamens and there's one stamen that comes right up like that we take it a little bit farther over here because I think it's not quite as centred as I would like it Right, so any work that I do around that area will now be 
protected. So there will be some colour seeping into that area. So what I've got to do now is wait for the, uh, the fluid mask to dry which might be 10 or 15 minutes. So I'll be back later. While we're waiting for the masking fluid drying let's just briefly have a look at some of the bits of equipment that we will be using for the next phase of the uh, painting obviously we're going to need paints now these paints I'm using today uh, the SAA paints and I've got to say I've been trying them out over the last couple of months and uh, absolutely spot on so that's a paint paint's covered I've got a broad range of 24 colours there I won't be using all of them I'm going to keep it quite limited palette Obviously I've got some brushes, uh, these are, uh, this one here is a synthetic but acts like a, a natural hairbrush and it's in a, a quill but it's, it's a, a, a pointed mop and this also is a pointed mop but I believe this is a synthetic and natural hairbrush works slightly different and that's for doing detailing work some other things that are important that I'll be using this squirty gun for water uh, my dabber cloth so when it gets a bit too wet the the, pay, uh, the brush uh, I can dab a bit of water off and two other tools that are really important for control of water uh, some tissue paper and some of this I believe they call it miracle clean but it's like a high density foam that you can use to control the flow of water and they're really the core pieces of equipment that I will use I may introduce uh, some bits but they're the core stuff okay we're ready to start painting I'm going to start with the background and that's going to be very fuzzed out and blurry so I'm going to use my uh, trusty squirty gun and give that a really good dousing once it starts deciding to come out there we go So that's that heavily doused and you'll find that different areas uh, have different levels of water on them. Now that, that's not a bad thing because some it means it will flow in different areas in different speeds and values. So I'm going to get my big brush make sure that's in a nice clean water and the first thing I'm going to do is the light colours so I'm going to really mix that up get myself a let's get rid of that get myself a, a nice work area for this green might even put a little bit of yellow in this lemon yellow nice and water it and get get splatting I'm trying to keep away from the inner side of uh, the flower I'm going to try and avoid round there a little bit because I'm going to put um, some of the colour of a flower in it which is like a a purpley colour it's not exactly purple but let's see if we can uh, go 
hopefully. We'll uh, have this done in a few seconds. When it's when it's as wet as what this is, like this, it just totally flows straight away. Now, one issue that I have found already is uh, that that's gone over a little bit. So, what I will do quickly is get a piece of uh, piece of tissue and blot it. And you can go around everywhere with this actually. That's a, a good thing to do, just wrinkle it up a bit and get some of the excess up, take a little bit of it off. And you get a lovely pattern of uh, very soft texture. Now that's that's your your light colour. So let's now go in with a darker colour. So I'm going to get these. I th believe this is. Uh, a sap green and in certain areas it doesn't have to be everywhere that there down there just reminding yourself that this is very, very blurred and in the background. So you don't want anything to be outstanding. And I think that might be it. Don't know what's up there. Put that there. And I'm happy now with that for the time being. I'm going to let that dry and we'll see what it looks like once it's dry because watercolour it dries an awful lot lighter than what it does when it's wet. So we'll, we'll just see and then we'll make some slight adjustments once we're once we've seen what it looks like when it's dry Let's get some blotting done because I really do want to make sure that they stay reasonably white not that there's any problem with some of it leaking in because that's the nature of watercolour in fact it's nice to actually get a little bit of uh, the neighbouring colour in your your next door object because it kind of gives it a a feel of the it's combining together in a, a a wet kind of a way right let's leave that for a while to dry now let's have a look at this background flower I'm not going to put huge amounts of detail in it, it's got to be as fuzzed out as what this part of the painting is to indicate the fact that it is actually quite a far away thing, although I still want to introduce some interesting colour into it. So this flower is pretty much um, like a burgundy purpley colour so I'm going to use this colour here that I'm wetting up now and that's magenta I believe that's magenta anyway 
so my first initial wash of this I'm going to do around that area and it's going to be very wet and the next bit I'm going to dab that off and get some more water, clean water and uh, go around this area and then get some a strong almost dry amount of it and go like that with it I've got to be careful not to put too much detail in this and it might be a matter of leaving it for a while while it dries and seeing whether that's enough but that to me looks like as far as I want to go with it at the moment now the, the stem it has a like a grey section first like a browny grey and then it goes to a green so I'm going to get some of this sap green put a little bit of blue in to darken it up a bit don't want to go too over the top with this that's actually let's make sure it's very very wet that's okay flowers do look a little bit like that although I will dab it away a bit I don't want it to go too over the top Right, once that's dry I'll nip it away a little bit so it fuzzes out but I'll now go in with a bit of tissue paper and remove a little bit of it at this side what the, the reference photo is indicating to me is that the light is coming in from there so this side needs to be as dark as I can get it without being too dark so the way to do that is to make this end lighter once this is dried I may go in with a slight wash of slightly darker at this size to emphasize that but apart from that 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 is done just remember it is part of the background map and we don't want to overwork it it's dry enough now for me to add a little bit of slightly darker colour to it. That might be a little bit. Let's snip that away a bit. Then once it's done that and it all blends into one another, it, it gives it a, a beautiful kind of sense of dimension. Even though it's it's blurred away into the background, I'm just going to do a bit of, bit of control work here. And there, there you go. That's that's that done now. We'll make a start of this area here. It's a similar palette to that, although most of that is a lot lighter. This part of the painting is pretty much in line with this, so it's going to be 
not as detailed because I don't want to draw your attention away to it but it's going to have sharper crisper edges than what this has so we'll make a start on that and like I say the the palette is similar to that I've got a fresh pot of uh, clean water it's important to try and make sure that that keeps clean some people have two pots they rinse out in one pot and just get fresh water but I haven't got space today to do that so I've just got this one pot keep it clean and uh, keep replenishing the water and uh, it'll prevent muddiness so like I said we're, we're working on this now and as we're doing a fairly loose painting I'm, I'm not going to be going into huge detail so let's mix up some of this magenta again and I want that to be to start with to be almost all water literally I've, I've just dabbed it in there like that, and it, it's mostly water that's just been slightly coloured if you notice it, it, as it's going on it's virtually water now it will it, it will uh, go a lot lighter that but we'll go over that later now I've noticed that that area is a bit more intense in colour so I'm going to drop a bit in there and that's what you do just create areas now I'm going to press down a bit harder now and look at the areas that I waxed earlier where it's hitting and missing which is great because that's what I want it to do and I'm almost a dry brush now with that but it's it's just bouncing it off now that area is actually all white so that's done its job it's exactly what I wanted it to do and you can leave it like that that so if I can get a bit more intensity of colour in that area you see how it, it naturally flows and I'm going to come down and I'm going to do that one last one to do intense area and then a white one now at this moment in time I want to try and uh, leave that as it is apart from possibly adding a bit of uh, bit of blue in certain areas just to add a bit of variety as I've done there but for now that's that done so we're not going to uh, we're going to leave that to dry so we're now looking at painting this the main feature of the uh, of the painting itself the Granny's bonnet, strange name for a flower. So we're slowly but surely coming forward. So the next thing to have a look at are these back petals or whatever you want to call them. So put my image up. You should have an image up already, but uh, again, it's it's that similar process. Of, uh, I've got that magenta already there although we'll put some more in 
it's great this because it's a really nice colour and it applies well and uh, just dab that off a little bit and that's what that's for and I'll, I'll start on this one but I'll, I'll go right into the edge like that and with this particular leaf it's, it, it's, it's like it's really it, it's got a, a texture to it and there's a bit there that is very strong hopefully you'll have a, a an image up once I've uh, done all the recording and everything and you're about to see what it is that I'm trying to explain and th th this is pretty much dry brush work and remember I put uh, the wax crayon on that now we're going to do that with all the rest of these uh, outer petals and then come back over it later and maybe once I've uh, done with these white areas uh, re-emphasize some detailing possibly so let's re-wet that and I call it dry brush because it, you're taking most of the paint out you're taking a lot of the moisture out of it so this is it it creates that almost dry kind of feeling now a brush you could use for doing this which i've not introduced you to is is this it's a, a filbert but it has a, a raked edge to it and what, what you do with that is you, that's really good for doing uh, your veining but uh, we'll persist with this other brush and it, again it's it's quite a dry brush technique this now in this area here it seems to be quite light so I'm going to be very careful about how I um, add colour to that area because it just seems to me that that's an area where there's a lot of light being caught on it although you can still see lots of veining in it And there is a tendency, and this is what I do a lot, and this is the reason why I don't get very successful at doing uh, flowers, uh, to overwork flowers. But I'm, I'm trying my best not to. Uh, I've just noticed up here that there's a, an intense area that I will uh, rectify. Around there. A lot of that can be dealt with. It looks as though it's some sort of shadow, but I'll, I'll indicate that because it's an interesting point in the in the painting. Now that also, let me put a tiny dab. So it's it's slightly more purpley this this area maybe that needs to be wet down a bit then it bubbles over 
and you go as far as I'm concerned that is that done and and that's the beauty of actually masking it off in the first place it it creates a uh, some nice effects for you without you having to overly concern yourself there we go on to the next one and each try your best not to um, uniformly do things because each leaf has its own individual characteristic So this one's more in the shade, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a lot bolder, but I am gonna make it quite dry, especially here. And there's a, an area of it quite dry there, so it's not always about. Um, wishy washy watery flowy stuff sometimes it's about adding nice brush strokes I want to come in here because there's a, a, an area of interest there Uh, a bulgy bit more. Oh, you can hear me. <laughs> there we go. Again, I'll I'll just. Uh, A tiny bit of dark into that. Don't want it too strong. That can be an area that's quite dark. Just one bit that I've missed there is that gap there. And again, that's going to be dark because it's there's very little light getting through into that. And I will make that prominent as well. So we're starting to see the form and shape of the outer flowers. We've got two more to do. So this one seems to go. to a very light tip but it, 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 it's moving in like that as well and we've got a, a strong area there leave that for time being and all of these flowers if if needs be uh, can be gone over if if you feel that it's not quite got the right feel so we're on to our last uh, outer petal or flower or whatever you want to call it get it a little bit of darkness in that one. Now there seems to be two areas to this one, like uh, this bit here. It's almost as though it's folded in. And then there's a, a little bit of that area. 
and then you've got your vibrant Get back to that dry brush technique just to add texture. And so we've got that bit done now. Might just do a little bit of extra work here while I've got this paint available. And one other area that I've uh, not quite looked at is that. Now, take a little bit of that green. There you go. So it, it's drying time again and I need to change my water, although it will still be a, a pretty similar colour. Alright, let's do the uh, insides of uh, this flower and it, it's the same colour palette and uh, again I think it's going to be a pretty, to start with, I want a, a really loose uh, loose but dry it, it, it's got almost uh, a very delicate now we get into the central part of it, we can start putting a fair amount of detail in, but I don't want to be over detailed. Area of the lips. Um, quite, quite dark. Yeah, that's that's a an interesting technique to use this dry, dry brush technique. going at it. We'll have a look at uh, look at this now. So it's got an awful lot of vein in, in it, but this is one way of giving it a, a, an essence of that veining we are having to paint every tedious little bit because once you start doing that 
the quality of the painting starts getting uh, poorer and poorer. You're saying that it does look nice when you do paintings in a, a botanical painting style, which is an old traditional watercolor painting for flowers style. But uh, we're not we're not doing that today. And I, I'm able to do this and paint like this because I've done that masking work earlier. So it is worth having a go at doing that masking. Because it saves you an awful lot of work later. And like I said, uh, um, later on we're probably going to be taking some of that wax off and reworking the flower a little bit and uh, giving that final bit of detail in Come on, let me pick it up again with the wet of it and right this one's quite light not on Because this is a fairly light one, I'm going to dab that out. Again, there's, there's that bit there that's actually in a similar vein, uh, quite, quite light. And it's good to have them strong, strong colours in amongst very light stuff. It's what gives watercolour its distinctive uh, feel. Just to make sure that that do not move any further. And we'll move in. You might have to reintroduce a little bit of that, just to emphasise that. Again, I'll probably take a little bit out of that. You need to wait a little bit for it to grip in. You can't just take uh, paint out while it's still wet because you'll find that it just causes other problems. So I'll move up to this one here. Again, we can have the luxury of being quite loose because we've done all the masking, all the work's done for us.
maybe a light bit there. Because the light is coming from there. And then we've got one more to do. And then we can start thinking about the uh, inner section. And then it's possibly a, a matter of going over various bits and putting some other sections in. Dry again. Try and get that fairly dry. We don't want that to be overly runny. So this goes like most of the rest of that is like a, a very very light colour. Let's see if we can get that up there. Get that bit in again. And we're not far done. Right, I want to concentrate on getting this um, stem uh, dealt with. It's got masking fluid on it at the moment. So we're going to get that off it and then we're going to paint it. So let's see what we can do. We've just got to be a bit patient with it because some papers, especially cotton ones, can be easily torn. And that's maybe the reason why people are tearing it, it's because they're not taking the time to slowly but surely take it off. So that's come off and it's it's fine. Um, we'll move on to very briefly painting it. It's not a, a, a high feature, so I'm not going to be doing too much with it. Try and get some sort of Uh, dark area. And last but not least, see if we can get some very dark area in it. I may need to come back to that later, but that's that done. So I've got fresh water, we're going to concentrate on that inner section there with colours in this range uh, for the stamen. If we remember, this has got masking fluid uh, in this area, so I'm going to really work 
uh, bright colours into that area. Once it's dried, take it off and we'll see what happens. Uh, work this area because it's, it's already got the kind of areas that I'm after so that's a lemon yellow this is more like a a, a cadmium kind of yellow a bit banana is that actually and uh, and this is a a bright orangey colour can't remember what it is exactly but uh, I don't want to go all along with that that area what that does putting a flood of uh, liquid in there it kind of uh, designates the area that the paint will act in so I'm just going to take a little bit up and now we're ready just go like that Just make sure that you're mopping up any areas that might start straying. Again, this is a matter of leaving this to dry. Uh, you may need to put another uh, coat there of colour. So we'll leave that at that. I just want to nip that up because it's, it's bound to encroach too much. There we go. And we'll leave that to dry and we'll get back to it once it's all dry. What I am going to do now is try and remove some of the wax from the image. I'll start on this one, I don't know, I can't remember how much I put uh, on that but we'll make a start and then we can put some bits of detailing in that although I don't want to put tons of detailing in so you need a good go I'm going to stay away from that area because that's got that masking fluid on it See how it comes off? It come, it, it bonds to the rubber. And that is definitely wax. So you can get the wax off. But you just got to be patient with it.
So what I'll do is I'll go around all that and get rid of all the wax. I'll do it off camera because it can take a while. And I'll get back to you once we've uh, got to that end of the process. Well, I've got all the uh, wax off of the painting. I've just got to remove the liquid masking fluid off of it. And I'm just going to be careful and do that. Again, you've just got to be patient with it. Don't try forcing it. Because that's when you rip it. There you go. The centre bit has little areas of white in it. Now I'm going to put other bits in there before I finish. But as as main thing to do is try and um, define these areas a little bit more. Although they are white, we need a little bit of light grey tone in it to make it feel as though it's three dimensional so that's going to be the next thing to do I've removed the wax from around the outer edge of this flower I've also removed the masking fluid from there which I'll, I'll work on a little bit more after but what I want to do now is do a little bit of blending bring a bit of colour into it and do a little bit of graying out of this white area although the flower and its edges like that are uh, white we don't want to just leave them like that we need to put suggestions of uh, grey tone in it to give it some three dimensional feel and general finishing off round there and then once we've done that we'll work on that and that will more than likely be the painting completed let's see if we can do a bit of um, a bit of blending but using this colour here and it's really subtle there We're literally barely, barely putting any colour at all in. It's almost all whiteness. If you if you look at that, uh, my tiniest suggestions of it, of colour, and it just finishes it off nice. I'm just going to put a hint of that colour in there. Just a hint at certain areas. There you go. I'm happy with that. So you, want, you don't want to overburden it with um, white areas. This area here is very light. Let's get some blending in. See if you can get the odd ripple of uh, of veining. And as you as you'll know. Um, that area I did put wax on it and yet you can still paint on it so it does remove which is a great thing
and see if I can just try it a little more for that. And again, it's exactly the same process. I possibly may need to do a bit more rubbing and getting off of uh, of various bits because I probably not rubbed it down as well as I could have done. Although it is coming off there. And again, we're taking some of the colour that's already there and just using it to bleed into the white area. It's very subtle. Incredible. At this point, it's there's virtually no paint at all. It's just water that's been tainted slightly with the the paint of the uh, already painted areas. And just give it bits of direction as well. Which uh, helps it. Look at that like that. One more to go, mate. Just put a teeny wing bit there. And then uh, Again, very, very, very light. Bit of blending, so it, it it's not too harsh. And that for me, apart from maybe a little bit of teeny weeny bit of veining, I'm not going to do too much. That for me is the the main part of the flower done. We've just got to focus his attention on this now. Uh, I'll just wait a few minutes until um, that's all dry. But I will also, let's just see if we can use the same policy as well to uh, nip away some of this white area. We don't want to absolutely lose it, but we don't want it to be hyper prominent as it can do. Like, like for example this one. So the way to do that is let's get a bit of water over it and let the um, the local paint that's on it nip it out a little bit. Again, this is a, a, a similar point, but that's a little bit in the distance, so I'm, I'm not overly concerned. I want to get rid of some of those hard edges, though, because it's kind of weird, that. Um, and I'm pretty much happy with what's there on that one. Now, this one needs a bit of work, so let's just... Um, can do. Don't want to be if I can move. Make that a little bit darker. Yeah. 
So now I've just got to make that a lot more prominent. Now one of the things it has got there underneath it, which helps a lot. If you can get that. A bit of... Um, just trying to mix a, a grey brown tone and that is for underneath here because it's, it's creating its own shadow within it which will help with um, the definition and in the and it's that combination of light and dark against one another that really helps create the end definition of that. Not so much dark stuff at this end, because light's coming at it there, but under here it's going to be a lot more darker so again that one is another thing that where, that you're going to have to just wait a while and uh, I'm going to see if I can um, introduce a little bit of this. Now I made a little bit of a mistake there because I've let that run into that, which is not what I want to do. So that th there is an area of fairly dark in uh, each one of these petals and we want to put that in because it helps balance out the image. one last area of strong darkness is that which we've already kind of defined now earlier on I talked about that area as well didn't I? but that's that's not that dark but we'll go over each area that I think's got a bit of shadow in it and, and that's all you're doing, you're putting areas of shadow in now or low light areas now I may, once I've actually done all this I may have to go over all of it and uh, soften up the edges A little bit there. I don't think there's an awful lot on that one, strangely. And uh, a few veins there, but again on this one, don't seem to be a, a huge amount other than in uh, corners like this.
So I'm going to leave that to dry now and uh, we'll get some of these edges sorted out and that's virtually the painting done apart from uh, the flower up at the top which I, I won't be doing it too much with let's do some uh, finishing work to this one here remember it's in a similar uh, plain uh, perspective as the main flower is so it has to have a certain level of detail in it uh, but I am just going to do what I did with the flower before and just use the paint that's on the page already so I've got to always keep in mind with this that it's the it's not the main part of the image, so I don't want to be overdoing it. In fact, I think that's that done. Get rid of some of these edges. So we've got some lost and found edges, which is a, a nice thing to see on a, on a watercolour painting. Right, we really are getting to the very end section now. I'll just uh, move this so I can see that that's that done uh, as far as I'm going to do it. I just want to really focus my attention on last final details in that and then we'll zoom out, have a look and see whether it's done or not. So it's the lemon yellow I really want with this and I'm going fairly thickly on this. Then I'm going to go in the yellow. I'm trying to get rid of some of this white area just to make sure that it differentiates between all these other white areas. just to get a bit more definition a little bit of that I need a tiny little bit because it could bleed all over this
Green, I think that's it done. There you go. Job virtually done. The, the only thing left to do now is get rid of some of these um, strong edges and and make them um, a little bit more softer. And I'll do that throughout the painting. And all that is is just what what they call lost and found edges. Some some you want to leave in because they help with um, definition, but some are look unnatural, so you uh, nip them down a bit. Make them a bit softer. For example, this the way it, it comes out, it gradiates out a little bit. Now, the, that is actually a shadow, so strangely, you want that to be fairly um, hard, but not that hard that it just don't, don't look right. That one's one way you could do uh, feather it out of it. And really all I'm doing now is faffing about, so I've got to get to the stage where I've got to tell myself to stop painting. Final checks, just to see whether there's anything else I need to do and um, I think that's me done so let's zoom out and have a look at the image as a whole. So that's basically the image. I don't know whether that's particularly well zoomed. I'll take a photograph and I'll put that up uh, on the video once it's once it's done. But that's my um, flower painting for today and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope that you've been able to learn something from it and please like and subscribe as is normal on YouTube and all your other social medias I'm always interested in learning about what you're doing and helping me also by uh, your commenting about uh, how I can improve because I definitely need to improve with uh, flower painting so 
thank you for coming and having a look at this video. Bye. Here is the end painting as I took a photograph after. I've also after painted some more areas with uh, a dark purple uh, to put veining in it to add a little bit of interest and detail to it. So I hope you've enjoyed that and thank you again for coming and having a look at this video.